Hey everybody, Dylan Distraction here, coming to you live from Fat Atlantic Studios. Thought I'd do a quick back to drawing board, talk about comic books, show it on my drawing table, do a little drawing of my creator on comic book series versus Hell Road Redemption, issue one, raw. Looks like uh, this. Sending out to anybody that gets anything at batlanticstore.com. Thrilled to draw these characters. Love making my own creator on comics. Thank you to everybody for liking, subscribing, thumbs upping, sharing. Drawing traditionally here, trying to have some fun, drawing little tiny faces of spine. One of my other characters in the series. This is a two page spread, and I'm uh, just gonna draw it traditionally for fun. I've drawn it digitally. I think I can show it to you. Let's see if it's in here. Um, but, uh, but, 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 uh, yeah, so drawing it traditionally now after drawing it digitally, just to have fun with it and rework it and just kind of give it another pass. And I think then I'll probably digitally ink it, but I don't know, maybe the whole comic book's in pencils. I don't know. I do what I want. So thank you so much to everybody for supporting my work. Really appreciate it. And drawing small like this is harder. It's one of those things like if I was drawing this digitally, I'd just zoom way in. And to draw it traditionally, a tiny little face like this, size of a, I don't know, nickel, to draw maybe a quarter, to draw small like this, I just have to get real close and sharpen my pencil real good. And it does, it, you do end up throwing different lines. So if I'm drawing digitally, I'm zooming in and throwing lines, zooming out, throwing lines. But with this, it's like, oh, I got to do these little tiny, small sort of curves and arcs. And it does give you a different perspective on things. It does make you kind of reevaluate it. And, and often what I find is um, when drawing sequentials, drawing pages of, you know, trying to do storytelling, I'm... You know, trying to push myself and push the story and put things in different angles and different characters and different poses and stuff. And you do really have to be patient with it because you can't just, you know, sometimes you have to go back through and rework something and rework something and rework something. And digitally, you just make a new layer, or edit undo, or double tap, or whatever. But when you're doing this sort of work, you gotta just kind of be patient. You might have to redraw things. You might have to rework stuff. But you know, I don't get too precious with it. It's comic books. It's my creator own stuff. Have fun with it. Draw stuff you love. Stay motivated. Keep working. All the things I tell myself. <laughs> Stay motivated. Keep working. Keep going. Just keep going. Just keep going. So yeah, thank you everybody that subscribed, liked, thumbs up, commented on my YouTube videos. DylanDistraction.com, that's my YouTube channel. Really trying to give that energy and effort. And it's been it's been fun. You know, it's, it's nice to have a, a reason to draw. And it's like, well, I gotta shoot video. I gotta, there's people that wanna see the process and hear me talk about it. So that's been really, really nice. And I appreciate that. I appreciate you for being there and listening. Hopefully some of the things I'm saying are interesting and you kind of connect and, and can relate to some of the stuff I talk about. And um, so I have an F density uh, graphite here. I think this one's F. Let's double check it. Yeah, F. And so I have F and you'll see probably shown this before but oh I lost the lid gotta have the lid that's gone forever that's that's never coming back nope I got it I found it thank goodness it's silver all right so with the f density graph you can see I have like have it at a like a flat edge so I can flip from the sharp edge to the flat edge and then with this one I think this is an hb and this is a heavier pencil so it kind of slows me down a little bit more even more and so this hb i go through with a and you can see i can put in like a darker line it's kind of far away but you get the idea it's the same thing as this light graphite dark graphite you get how light and dark works 
And so I'm really enjoying drawing like this. It's, it's fun. It is time consuming, which is kind of nice. Because I can't just blow through pages. I gotta really spend some time and be purposeful. And uh, you'd think tightly penciling like this would be for an inker, but no, just this is just kind of me drawing for myself. I wouldn't hand my stuff up to an inker. I don't think anybody. I mean, you can go to DylanAndrewsArt.com right now and ink anything you want. I got pencils up there. Go nuts. Go to town, as they say. Or go to DylanAndrewsArt.com and ink whatever you want. Have fun. Follow your dreams. But I don't know if there's people really looking to do inks much lately. I haven't seen a lot of people doing inking samples. Um, definitely just kind of more all-in-one pencil or inkers. But, yeah, hopefully people still like inking. It's still a thing people do. Even if it's digital. All right, so that's Spine. He's hooked up to a thing. I'm going to draw the whole thing. Like, hooked up to a machine. Uh, what else do I got to draw? I got to draw all these little, like, fire lightning things. Panel borders. Electrical panel borders. And then that's like that. And I'll do one like that. A lot of graphite in my hand, too. Usually what I do is I lick it and then wipe it on top of it. <laughs> That's gross. Like, how, like, what happened to him? I was ingesting graphite for 10 years. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, you know. He's an idiot. Let's use a damp towel. Damp paper towel. Probably better than just licking the graphite off my hand. Yeah, obviously see that? Like, I'm just dragging that across the page. That's why I try to start in the top left and work my way down so I'm not putting graphite back over stuff. But if it happens, it happens. And I'm not going to go in and finish and fill in all these black areas because I don't want to. <laughs> so I'm not going to. And again, don't need to. Don't have to. Don't want to. Not gonna. Fine. Why bother? Don't want to? Not gonna do it. Let me get my circle template out. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, that looks great. I heard one time uh, Michael Turner was saying, he's like, yeah, if you notice all the circles and all the and all my illustrations are about the size of a CD. Because <laughs> that's what we had. So I just drew everything, with, I just used CDs for circle tumble. So I did that. I grabbed, I got like a blank CD somewhere in there. I'm like, genius. It's a good size. It's a good size circle. It worked for a lot of stuff. So I recommend it. Michael Turner, another artist gone too soon. My, Stephen Hughes, gone too soon. Michael Turner, gone too soon. Lost so many incredibly talented professional comic book illustrators. You know, it just makes you realize, like, you gotta appreciate people while they're here, man. You know, you don't know how long people have, and some incredibly talented people are just not going to be around anymore. You know, like those. Thought of the, you know, like Perez and Neil Adams, Tim Sale, you know, Bray Fogle. Like, ugh. Just these incredibly talented, inspiring creators. And just, that's it. That's all they got. Like, okay. Really been a huge, huge loss as these icons are just, just gone just so don't want to bum anybody up but you know 
appreciate people while they're here. You know, tell them you, you like their work. Tell them you appreciate them. Because you don't know how long you got. And I was... And I always thought Frank Miller would be the one to go. And I'm like, oh, so glad I got to see him a few times. And Neil Adams, I got to see him a few times at Comic Cons. Frank Miller, I got to see him speak a few times at Comic Cons. And I'm such a Frank Miller fan. But, you know, you don't, you don't know how long people have. I'm glad Frank Miller's still around and working on his own stuff. Frank Miller presents stuff. Looks great. Doing variant covers for Marvel. And DC, I think, too, possibly. And I was listening to the Rob Observations podcast and was talking about Mount Rushmore. And I was like, how many people are on Mount Rushmore? Five? So if you had your Mount Rushmore of comic book creators, who would those five be? I was like, oh, that's a tough question. That changes for me almost daily. It's it's so subjective. You know, everybody's Mount Rushmore creators would be different. And of course there are the he had Steve Ditko, Neil Adams. Steve Ditko, Neil Adams, Jack Kirby. And then I don't know who the other one was. And you're like, yeah, it's tough to argue with those. I mean, those guys really change the game. I don't know if they'd be my personal iconic Mount Rushmore just because they were before my time as far... You know, I was influenced by the guys that were influenced by those guys. And so, obviously, they're incredibly important. And I would, you know, not to take anything away from... I mean, obviously, Steve Ditko... Come on. Jack Kirby. Come on. Neil Adams. Hello. It's like Frank Miller was, you know, le was learning under Neil Adams and aping Gil Kane. <laughs> if you look at early Jack Kirby, if you look at early Frank Miller, it's a lot of Gil Kane under the, under the guidance and tutelage of Neil Adams. Which is a good combo. I mean, that's nothing wrong with that. That's how you get a Frank Miller. And I'd say Frank Miller would be on my rush more. Just because of how influential he was to me. And at that time, just seeing his work, just being just blown away by it. You know, my first comics I ever read were Frank Miller comics. So I'd say Frank Miller would be on my Mount Rushmore. Hard to top him. I'd say... I don't know, I in, instinctively thinking Eric Larson would be on my Mount Rushmore. Again, his Spider-Man was, was my Spider-Man. You know, and it's kind of like, who's your Spider-Man artist? That's always, uh, I mean, that's such a, an important comic to a young person. I think everybody kind of gravitates towards Spider-Man in their, in their youth. Marvel's done a great job of making that character relevant again and again and again. And so if you're like, well, who's your Spider-Man artist? They'd be like, well, I, I, Todd McFarlane, sure. But I'd say Eric Larson was probably my Spider-Man artist. I always liked those issues as much or maybe more than the, than the McFarlane issues. Nothing taken away from Todd, obviously. Genius. Incredibly inspiring entrepreneur and creator. So yeah, Frank Miller, Eric Larson. Who would be two more on my... So many good ones. I don't want to... I mean, Joe Kubert probably is up there. Just because of his legacy and how much he influenced people. And... Uh, you know, I think it's, I think it'd be strange to neglect him from that list. So I'd, I prefer Joe Kubert over almost any other classic 
comic book illustrator just because of his line quality and his, you know, the way he inks himself and his storytelling. And he wasn't ever put on a book like, you know, you look at Jack Kirby, he's put on, you know, Fantastic Four and created the entire Marvel Universe. And you're like, yeah, I mean, obviously that's, you can't argue with that. The guy's a legend. But if he was, you know, if he'd stayed on Western and Romance comics, would he be held in the same esteem? Or, you know, and you look at Joe Kubert and you're like, you know, he was doing some real personal, creator-owned stuff. You know, he wanted to do war comics, Sergeant Rock. You know, he wasn't doing superhero stuff as much and still was able to be a legend. You know, imagine if he had a run on X-Men. You know, you'd be like, oh, Jesus, Jesus Louise. Or imagine if he had a run on... Um, he did a little bit of the Midnight Suns Ghost Rider stuff with Andy and Adam Kubert, which was great. But he was never put on a book like Moon Knight, which would be insane. Imagine a Joe Kubert Moon Knight. So I think it's tough to gauge the creator by their gig right you have to kind of judge them on their you know if Jack Kirby had stayed doing westerns and romance would you be like oh he's the greatest thing ever you'd be like I don't know I'd definitely view him in a different way just like Joe Kubert he never got to do Fantastic Four X-Men Spider-Man he did a not really any Batman either no Superman look at Joe Kubert's body of work it's World War II stuff, some enemy ace, tour, Sergeant Rock, and yet still, with those rather obscure titles, you know, I don't think anybody's going, oh man, I love enemy ace. <laughs> it's like, uh, do you? <laughs> really? That's your favorite comic book? Oh yeah. I love World War II comics from the perspective of the Nazis. It's like, really? Okay. I love, um, what were some other ones he did? Tex, right? Oh, I love westerns. It's like, really? Okay. Never historically ever been very popular, but that's what you're into. So he was able to be one of the greatest illustrators in comic book history doing things that not terribly commercially viable. You know, I love Tor, but I don't think people bought it. I mean, Hawkman, probably his biggest... And the guy just crushed pages. I mean, he's just a working cartoonist. And then created the Kubert School. And inspired and, in, and influenced an entire, you know, a lifetime of comic book creators. I attended the Kubert School briefly. And you're like, oh my god, this is a, a mecca for comic book illustration. It's like, I wish I had just gone here. Maybe not, but... So, that's three. And Eric Larson, I mean, it's just... Love that guy's work. So, especially his early stuff. And so, I mean, Savage Dragon is just such a huge influence on everything I do. So, Frank Miller, because of Sin City. Because of Daredevil, obviously. Ronin, Dark Knight Returns. You know, you can't argue with that. Eric Larson, personal choice, just because of his body of work, creator, writer, inker, 300 issues of Savage Dragon. Amazing. Joe Kubert, just because of the fact that he was so prolific, created so much, had a school, taught, and was doing titles that are not very well known. You know, it's just worked for decades on stuff that was you know, not the big Marvel or DC books and still was incredibly important and influential. Working on stuff that you could have a tough time remembering. So I think those are three solid choices and I could, you know, that, that fourth spot really would be a rotating door of what am I into today, right? What are What have I read today? And that just changes constantly as I read and am influenced by new things. Obviously, uh, Matt Wagner's Grendel is incredibly important. I love um, John Romita Jr. 
his stuff, just the body of work and the decades of penciling. Greg Capullo, incredibly important. David Finch, incredibly important. John Byrne, incredibly important. Dan Jurgens, I love. Um, Mark Silvestri might be up there. I love Rob Liefeld's stuff just because of how much he's, you know, such an entertainer and illustrator. And hype man. I think Mark Silvestri, I think of um, Rob Liefeld like uh, wrestling. I don't watch wrestling, really. But I think of him like that. Like, he's the guy that comes out with a microphone and goes, woo! And you're like, what is even happening? I'd be like, oh, it's the greatest thing I did this, sir. And you're like, this is, yeah, okay. He's like, he's like the macho man Randy Savage of comic book artists. Where he's just going to come out, stand in the center of the ring, and, you know, like, can you smell what the rock is cooking? Stone Cold Steve Austin smashing beer cans. I don't know why, but I envision Rob Liefeld like that. Like, just this personality, you know, just this larger-than-life entertainer who happens to do comic book illustration. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's kind of how I see it. All right, DonutDistraction.com. That's my YouTube channel, Make Comics Cool. That's my Patreon. Dylan Andrews Art, you want to see more of my work? Bat Atlantic Store. If you have your Mount Rushmore, we'll go four or five illustrators, comic book artists that you think are just, for you... Incredibly important and influential. Um, I have a hundred more I could mention. There's just so many awesome names. So many. I mean, Sal Busema, Tim Sale, um, Jason Fabok is great. Tyler Kirkham is incredible. So many. So many. Paul Pelletier. So many awesome illustrators that I'm a huge fan of. But whoever yours are, let me know. I mean, it's, you know kind of up to interpretation everybody has different things they love and are influenced by been reading a lot of Stephen Hughes love his work on evil evil Ernie rest in peace Michael Turner rest in peace um so I got a million more all right have a great rest of your day okay thanks bye